I would like to say hello to everybody. And um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mati, and I come from Denmark. And I'm very happy to be here and to be able to speak with you or to you. And um, I would like to share my testimony of what God, through Jesus and His sacrifice, done in me. I was born 22 years ago in Warsaw, in Poland. That's the capital of Poland. And um, at the time when I was born, my, my parents had just divorced. And uh, my mother had three of us, so it was pretty hard for her to raise three children alone. At the same time, though, she became an Adventist. And... Uh, she was just converted. And I remember as a little child, she would read stories to me from the Bible and explain me, and it kind of sticked in my mind. And uh, I think it had a great effect on uh, my future life also. But uh, my mother believed in, in organization. She would she would try to bring all her family to, to the church. And so she led me and my brothers and sisters to the church. But uh, every time I, I had to go as a child, I, <laughs> there was something in me that was disagreeing with, with what I heard over there. Because I remember all, all, of, all the times when I had to obey the don'ts, don't, don't do this and don't do that, sit straight and be quiet. And uh, my nature was against it. <laughs> so uh, I remember one time when I grew a little bigger, a teacher in a, in a, in a children's school asked us to learn and memorize Ten Commandments of God. And um, before the sermon started, we would have to go up and tell everybody what we have memorized. And you know, little children, like six to ten years old, they don't understand it much, you know. And we had to go up and say it blindly, what, just learn words without knowing what we say. For, for the benefit of those who are sitting and listening. And um, I didn't also understand the Sabbath idea, what my mother was practicing. I didn't understand why on Friday should we turn off the TV? What was, what was, what was so strange about Sabbath coming. And you know, we would turn off CD, uh, TV and we would drag the Bible and we would sing some songs and, and we, we would be holy people just in the Sabbath time. And then the ordinary life would begin again after the sunset next day. All, all these things have led me to a hypocritic state because... I was asked to believe something and to practice something what was not in harmony with my nature and with something that was not flowing out of my heart. And I was attracted more to the world than to the church and what was being said over there. So I had this misconception of God developed in my mind. Later on, we would move from the city into, into the countryside, and I remember that was a big hit for me because I liked the city and all the things in it. And uh, I remember the times when I would go to school and they would consider me a, a country boy, you know? And I wanted to be somebody. I didn't want to be a crazy guy who would not attend the religion at school. And... Uh, 
to be a country boy, you know? This is how it is in Poland. You, everybody is compelled to go to religion at school. I don't know how it is in, Gen in Jamaica. You don't have a religion subject at school. Okay. But in Poland, at least, there is a priest coming and he has a religion. And I would also always stay out. And I was considered an, an alien or an outsider, you know. People would look differently, even the teachers, you know. They would consider me differently because of some rules that I didn't understand and that I had to practice. And that was, that was the danger of external religion that doesn't deal with your heart problem. Because nobody ever told me what, how to deal with the evil that was in me from the beginning. How to combine the two things, the, the requirement of the law or the requirement of the people with my inside man. And uh, that taught me to lie to myself to put on the show. In that way, I would, I would put on the show and drift away from the beautiful stories that my mother read to me when I was small and uh, that has sticked in my mind. And I would become a, a hypocrite just attending church. And I would remember about, about when you are 14 years old, they impress on you the idea that you have to be baptized because that's the, that's the sequence. You, you are born in Adventism, you grow, and you are a good Adventist, you put on the show, and you, you have to be baptized. So I said, okay, I have to be baptized because I, I was playing the game. And I remember the meetings we had with some, some pastor. He would, he would just tell us some theology present some ideas that I had to remember what he was telling about. And that was the preparation for the baptism. And uh, finally, I was, I, was, I was clothed in a white robe, had to proclaim my faith. And I was in the baptisterium, you call it that way? Yeah. The... the, the, the Swimming pool. <laughs> you have to understand that I don't know so English so well. So, <laughs> and uh, and that was the the place I I could never imagine myself to be in because I was there not knowing what I am there for really. That was another striking thought in my in my mind, you know. The guy would raise his hand, say, say some phrase that I didn't understand, some about three persons, something, I, I didn't catch it. <laughs> but then I would be deep down, and I was wet coming back, and uh, everybody around was happy. <laughs> but I didn't understand what happened, really. Maybe it was looking funny, I don't know. But uh, after the baptism, I got the idea that I have to try my best. I have to somehow connect these ideas around me. And uh, because I saw that something was wrong in, in, inside me, and I would try to do my best. But as I was trying, I would drift further and further away from what I wanted to be. And uh, at one point I said, I cannot do it. I, I will not be a hypocrite. So I, <clears throat> I ended up openly rejecting any Christianity. And I know that this has caused a great pain to my mother's heart. And I'm very sorry for that. But... Um, I, did, I, I just knew that I cannot be a hypocrite because my nature was compelling me to do something else. So I, as I was drifting away, I would indulge myself in drugs, 
parties and worldly living. I would go so deep in sin that I would still lie and uh, I don't know if any of you have ever reached the, the rock button, but I hope you haven't and you have realized what you are really b- before you, you, you happen to be there. But I did. I went to the utmost extreme of, of what I can be in my nature. And um, always in the back of my head there was this idea that God is after me and he, he demands something from me. And I have learned that the law is holy and just and good. And it was always beating, you know, because I was trying to put this voice down by drugs and going from one state of being high to another state of being high. And at that time, I think I reached the, also the, the peak of my misconception about God and His love. I remember waking up sometimes in the nights and asking God to either kill me or help me because that was the solution, you know? I, I really disgusted myself because I knew what I am. And this voice in the head could not be removed always. So I, I was thinking about God as somebody who, who is after you. <laughs> At that time I ended uh, high school and I, did, I don't know how I did it, to be honest. Because of m- most of the time I was, I was on the drugs. But I did it somehow. I would, my mother would also uh, force me to go to anti-drugs meetings where you learn to discipline yourself and you learn to control yourself. But of course that didn't work because whenever I would have a chance I would try drugs again. And in, uh, So I was always dealing with uh, something inside me that was compelling me to do something else that others would seem to find good for me. But uh, I ended high school and I was in that state, being dead alive. And then a friend of mine came and um, he proposed me a a work outside Poland in Denmark. And I thought, I have nothing to lose here. I have just ended high school. So I said, okay, I'll go. I said, I'll have some more money to buy some drugs. <laughs> but when I got there, I met people that, that were Christians because the, the place my friend was working was a printing press. And uh, they were Adventists again. But I don't know. But I think Adventists in Poland, they are very strange people, you know? I think they have reached the... I don't want to say that really, but some of them, I think they have, from my experience, they have reached peak of far, being Pharisee, you know. In, in other countries, it is, it is differently because in Poland, there is much Catholicism and people, even though they leave Catholicism, they carry the ideas into Adventism. In Denmark, there was no such problem because the Reformation has been there. So they are all Protestants. They have different thinking. And so I was influenced by that. And what I saw, I, I thought, it's a, it's a chance for me to try again. So um, my friends would invite me to church, and I would start going again. And I would pray to Jesus. And I found that the bigger sins I would reject easily. It was no problem. Since I, I, I went to church and, and, and I had a prosperous life, money. So I called Justyna once when she was in Poland and I said, you know, Justyna, think, things have changed a bit and uh, I'm not partying anymore and I have met a new friend, Jesus. 
And she said, oh, oh. <laughs> but then she came and she, she was also participating in that. But uh, when, I met, when I met Jesus again, the sins I, would, I was battling with, they were, they were away because my eyes were fixed on him. I was, not, I was not thinking about that I go to church or I meet with these people or th- that people. I was dealing with my understanding. I, I was looking at Jesus, whatever my understanding was, and I found that God loves me whatever, whatever happens, whatever I am. <clears throat> but as the life went on, and I found that I'm losing this, I'm losing the victory over, uh, again, I started to do what my friends advised me to do. I started to be more earnest in prayer, more earnest in going to church, in reading the scriptures, reading the Ellen White books, and I would find, as I, as I was trying, the same exact thing would happen to me as it happened before I was small. I would find myself drifting away and away. And I said to Jesus, what is going on? You gave me a victory. Where is it now? And I, and I cannot count the nights I spend on my knees and the tears I have shed before Christ. I remember only that the law was attacking me and it was hitting my head like a two-ton hammer squeezing my brain. I was unjust unholy and ungood in the sight of the law. And I would like to read the scripture for, to back this up. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. And verse 24. So the law was... no. 24? 23. Right? Yes. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So my state was under the law. And I dealt again with uh, something outside of me and not inside of me. And I prayed to God again, kill me or give me a solution. Save me or destroy me because my life is without reason. And then some of you probably know Swavek. Swavek. He has been here once, right? He is a, a carrier of news, CDs, and sermons. <laughs> he goes from one place, picks something up, and goes to another place, leaves that, and picks something else, and goes, goes further. He's brought me the message of righteousness by faith from Jamaica. I, I didn't like it in, in, the, in the beginning. And I would say to him, okay, I'll listen. I don't know what he was so excited about. But I would listen. And um, I would listen and listen more and more and more. And my eyes opened. And as I was listening, I went down bef- before the Lord again on my knees. And I said, thank you, Lord, for showing me the way. I, I, 
I didn't experience that before that he can answer that. You know, when you face Lord, knowing that there is no way out, he is then able to help you. Because you are brought, you are brought to the law, to the wall, by the law. And the, the law it will be always there to push you against the wall. And to kill you until you drop dead. You know? <laughs> so, the time I first believed that I don't have to do anything, that Jesus has done everything, was the most beautiful de- time in my life. I stood up and I thought, I'm flying. I felt a spring of love in my, in, inside of me. And I knew that that was Jesus. And I said, everybody must know about this. In the meantime, of course, I would learn also about the truth about God from Slavic. And I had accepted that like this. And it also helped me to understand God's love to me and his unchangeable character of love. So I went to my brethren and I shared with them. And as I was saying, they would look concerned about what I was saying. I gave them the the CDs, the sermons, and they would say, uh, yeah, it's a bit emotional. But I said, yes, of course. How, can you, how, can, how can't you have emotions when you know that you're redeemed and you don't have to battle again? And they said, yeah, but it is not the state of our, of our, of our nature that changes. They said. So... I was a bit down with it, but as as the life would go again, and I was rejoicing in it, another experience would come that I had to find out that by faith you accept the gift of God, and by unbelief you can lose it in a second. I didn't know, I must be, I was not listening to what uh, David and Howard were saying on the sermons. Maybe God has put his hand on it and covered it before me, but I didn't know how to maintain the faith. And um, I found myself again in repentance, in finding who I am. And with that state, I went to camp meeting last year, where... Brother David was, and Irvin. And I remember David's un- uh, <laughs> first questions when we met. He would say, Mati, where do you find yourself in the message of righteousness by faith? And I would say, I'm still repenting, even though I had experience once. But as, but as the camp meeting went on, I understood more and more, you know. When somebody speaks to you and you see the person and you see how, 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 is, how, how Lord is presenting it through him, your faith is built and, you, and your understanding grows. And this is where your faith can hold on something. So, David has... Um, presented me idea of why did Jesus really have to die? And when I heard that, I understood again. And I desired now to give my life to Jesus entirely. Amen. And, I, and there was a proposal of being baptized in the name of Jesus. And my heart responded And I was baptized in the name of Jesus. And, uh, and I also remember that it was both David and, and Irvin 
were baptizing me. I don't know, maybe it was, it was because two men had to put me to death. I don't know, maybe God needed two. <laughs> but it happened, and I, and I began the good fight of faith. I remember that after I was baptized, I couldn't stop my tears running. I was weeping like a little baby. And I know, I knew that I was redeemed again. After we reached the campsite again, I opened the Bible and it was Colossians 3.3 3 that I looked in. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. You know, these words meant everything to me. everything, and they do still today. But you know, the fight of faith, the fight is something when you fight and you get hit somewhat, sometimes. But this is the good fight, so you have the right weapon to fight the fight. And this weapon is the life of Christ. And... Um, I would like to appeal to young people that they should never they should treasure the truth that they have here because this is a safeguard we have safeguard oh safeguard yeah. our assurance <laughs> and the truth is is a big treasure to know it And I also realized one thing not long ago that the best knowledge is to know who I am in both of the lives. In my life and in the life of Christ. The first knowledge tells you that you are nothing. You are capable of nothing when it comes to good. And that's a very precious knowledge because then you know what your problem really is. And you seek to find Christ. And when you find yourself in Christ, that's the, another precious knowledge because you know you have been given everything in Christ. New life, redemption, and victory over sin. Most of all. But this can be achieved and only maintained by relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Ellen White says that every day <clears throat> we should contemplate his life, spend an hour contemplating his life, right? And I don't know, but it does something to me when I read in Matthew. Um, let me find it. In Matthew. In Matthew 27. 27. It says, Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. I don't know if you can imagine such such thing, you know. But I, I do contemplate about it very often. What has Christ come through to save me? He was he was one man against a company of soldiers, brutal vessels of Satan. And when I contemplate about it, I see what manner of God, of love, God has bestowed upon us. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns 
and set it on his head. They put, it as, they put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, God of the Jews, they said. When I think about it, I find myself again in the, in the first truth. Who I am, who I am that the, the, the Lord Jesus had to suffer so much for me. And <laughs> contemplating about it, I find myself broken again. And then the other wonderful truth comes, that he was, he died to sin. And he was resurrected. And this life he gives us. If we can only accept it by faith, not by what we do. So I want to appeal to you all, brothers and, brothers and sisters, to fight the good fight of faith. Because that's the wonderful, the most wonderful fight we can ever have. Thank you for your time. Right. I need a guitar. Okay. The song is in Polish, so I, I hope you will you will not laugh so much. The last verse though is in English, so I hope you will join us singing it. Jezus martwy wstał w sercu my. Jezus martwy wstał. Jezus martwy wstał w sercu my. Jezus powróci wkrótce tu. Jezus powróci wkrótce tu. Jezus powróci. Jezus powróci wkrótce tu. Sing Alleluja to the Lord. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. 